ipmnation.com. Live from the Outpost Studios in Columbus, Ohio, you're listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. Brought to you by ipmnation.com. Get ready for the gong heard round the world. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This is not a drill. All Natural Being with Brian Brody is designed to shake your sense of self to the core. It's full contact psychology with an empowering twist, a philosophical loofah for your soul. For those of you not ready or comfortable releasing your inner superhuman, listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Brian Brody. Once again, thank you for joining us. How hard can this be? Thank you for joining us here at allnaturalbeing.com. And what are we talking about this evening? Uh, It looks like it is the 384th episode. Wow, I like that. 384th episode of the number one rated show. Let me get rid of this. Number one rated show. On IPMNation.com, you're into all natural being. You know what? I'm running around. I'm busy hanging out with my friend Doug, hanging out with my friend Larry on the phone, and I wasn't paying attention, so I didn't know where I put the gong. So let me do this. It's supposed to be the gong heard around the world, broadcast as it happens. Let me make a real gong hit. I couldn't find the... There we go. Couldn't find the mallet earlier. There we go. Thanks to Telestream Wirecast, we're coming live from the transitional radio uplink here in Columbus, Ohio, directly to IPMNation.com and multicast live, 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 live on Facebook, AllNaturalBeing.com, and our Brian Brody app as well. Please remember, we rebroadcast this little soiree of fun on iTunes. I guess you'd call it a podcast at that point, but iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, you know, all the usual suspects. Twitter for now, however it plays out. I was talking to Wayne about getting, oh, I'd like a social media platform called Triggered, but I don't know where that's going to go. Greetings wherever you are, here in the garden of the mortals, the labyrinth of life itself. As I've said before, and you've heard me, the ups and downs, the lefts and rights, the pivots, the swerves, the blind alleys and cul-de-sacs, never a dead end unless we decide it's a dead end, life constantly moves at you. That's true. Fate is relentless. But so is divine intervention. So I guess you could say that life's labyrinth, as I mentioned last night, it's like a Rubik's Cube, right? Divine intervention stacked on top of divine intervention. A chess match between the dynamic that is you and the darkness that some of us give into. Now, you know, just like darkness, like opaque, we forget who we are. Right? That's what I'm talking about. Other way, it's your shot at running the table here at the Labyrinth, leveling out only as you see fit. You don't need the committee vote. You don't need permission from anyone. Right? How vapid would we have to be to long for the committee vote? That's not you. You wouldn't be hanging out here if it were. Your ferociousness, it's in your blood. You can feel it. I know you can. You just have to get your mind to recognize it, recognize it, and embrace it. But that's why we're here, to be your amnesia buster, to be your friendly blue force, always putting your heart's highest priority top of the list where it belongs, reinstalling and reinstating. I guess I should do some of this. Reinstalling and reinstating the true wit, wisdom, and wallop of your inner whisper, rebooting your robust, commencing your counterpunch, all in time to outbrutal the brutal that is the cut and shuffle that fate can deal you on a daily basis and to bring your own bold once and for all. Because as you know, I believe there's a storm coming. You can be jacked up or you can be buttoned up. You make the call. It's up to you to decide how you're going to play fate's next move. 
But before we get into it this evening, hello to my friends here in the United States and Canada, Mexico, the UK, my good friends in Ecuador, China, Philippines, Brazil, India, Australia, Germany, Italy, France, Nigeria, Turkey, Japan, Singapore, Thailand, Belgium, Sweden, Israel, South Africa, Egypt, Puerto Rico, Kenya, the Netherlands, Iran. Colombia, Greece, Ireland, Argentina, Peru, Austria, Poland, to those joining us from all over the globe. Thank you for all the, uh, all the, just all the correspondence. We super appreciate it. And it's great to have you with us. I truly am fired up to be driving your bandwagon, to be avidly you, to be your virtual hitchhiker if you're out and about on the go. And that's what I love is riding shotgun, getting to hang with you while you're busy moving about your day, your night, whatever it is. So what are we waiting for? Here's your opportunity to mortal up because I believe this is the perfect time to love the way you think. I believe it's the perfect time to be your all natural being. So what do you say? Let's go kick in some doors. And, you know, we talk about this from time to time that uh, most times we'll go, oh, you know, I pretty much just kind of riff in the moment figuring out what a particular show is going to be about tonight or how we're going to make it work, what we're going to do, that kind of thing. And tonight is a perfect example of that. I, I think what we'll do is tomorrow night, let's agree that tomorrow night we're going to talk about uh, the rebound, right? Brian bouncing back. We're going to talk about I'm going to highlight and I'm going to actually show some of the gear from the companies that I'll use, right, right of bang after the next surgery that I have coming up. Because here's why I think that's important. You might be going, well, Brian, I don't plan on, uh, you know, I don't plan on needing any of those things that you might be talking about in terms of recovering from a brain surgery. I don't see that being the case. But what I would offer to you is, let's say like me, you got big plans for the holidays coming up, right? Gingerbread houses. You're going to bite the head off a, of, a, of a chocolate chip reindeer cookie, plenty of pie. You know, just eat however you want. But then, right, the bell's going to toll. It's going to be New Year's. You're going to go, oh, for this New Year's rev- resolution, I need to focus on doing this or doing that. So, as you know, as I prepare to come back out of the surgery this Friday, I'm going to lose my tumor 29, and I'm going to do everything I can to get back in the same shape that you're going to be looking to get into come your New Year's resolution. So I'm thinking, this year, let's just hit it together. Let's, right, give yourself permission, enjoy the holiday, I mean, eggnog, right? Kid, enjoy the mistletoe, enjoy the eggnog, whatever you got planned. And then maybe you can learn a little bit. If you want, you can kind of like model me. You can plagiarize me. You can go, oh, well, what are you doing, you know, to get back? What are you going to do to lose the tumor 39, right? What are you going to do to get back on top of your game? So I think what we could do is we'll highlight that tomorrow on some of the companies. I put it up over in the Facebook post today talking about some of those things, right? When we talk about the water fast, when we talk about uh, BioPro Plus 500, when we talk about ProPure, when we talk about, ooh, this one, the, uh, the blender buffer, what a tremendous difference that's made in my life. Uh, CBD Pure, those kind of companies. So everyone that's mentioned in the thread earlier, we'll be doing that show tomorrow night and, you know, kind of kicking the tires. You'll be able to see exactly what I'm going to do, exclusively what I'm going to do to battle back from my fourth brain surgery in, in a couple of years. And, and again, I think what you'll be, you could be, if you wanted to be somewhat excited and go, wow, I could use this come my New Year's. You mean I get to eat? I get to party? I get to carry on? I get to do whatever I want through the holidays? Yes. Yes. Right? And then we'll have like a proven plan of what we're going to be able to do to go, "Ah, all right, it's New Year's. I can enjoy New Year's. And then my New Year's resolution, right, we'll be able to work on that together. So that's what I'm hoping. uh, That's what I'm hoping will be the case, and we're going to highlight all of that uh, tomorrow night for certain. All right, let me hop into the thread real quick, say hello to everybody, and then we can mention what it is that I thought about this evening uh, that we could talk about, and and because here's what's happening, and I think, as, as you can imagine, you're getting ready, and you're thinking, oh, okay, as you prepare for something, you know, whether, whether you view it as big or not big or, or, or whatever, you could say, oh, well, Friday's kind of a, a somewhat of a big deal, so what are you doing to get ready for it? And so a lot of it is mental preparation, right? John, good evening. Lee, good evening. Thank you so very much. Jenny, good evening. Nice to see you. Rita, nice to see you as well. Alice, hello to you. Shane, hello. Where the heck have you been? Yes, Shane, everyone wants... Oh, he's getting ready for his 2020 run. 
Jamie, nice to see you. Thank you so very much for joining us, as it is Candace. Thank you. Guess it's time to start the clock for Brian to keep him on his toes. Yes, I'll be sitting down here before too long, but you know, I, I think I get your point. Good evening, Brian. Nancy, thank you so much. And Henry, good evening, Brian and Henry. Nancy, thank you very much. Yippee, love it. Bring your own bold. Henry says, doesn't mean it has to be facing a traumatic issue. It could as be something as focusing on being happy. I could not agree more, Henry, as, as oftentimes with the things you post up. I go, yep, couldn't agree more. Couldn't have said it better myself. Absolutely agreed. Uh, let me see. Ooh, collaborative New Year's resolution. Yes, that's what I'm thinking about, right? Let's do it together. Good evening also to Nell. Nell, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being. And here's one of the things I was going to talk about because, you know, as I'm preparing and I sent something to Wayne, I don't think we got a graphic for it enough. So you'll have to forgive me. Maybe I can just, eh, I can't find it either. Where is it? Oh, here it is. So I had this picture that I was going to put up tonight. And of course, I didn't get it done in enough time. So it didn't happen. You know, life according to Brian. But I have this thing and you won't be able to see it now. So I don't even know why I bother showing it. But it is a folder that I was going through when I was, you know, covering like you got to do the will. You got to do the I don't know what they're called. You know, all the different paperwork you have to go through before you go through something like this. And I came across this honor graduate certificate ribbon from my first soiree in the military, United States Air Force, undergraduate ribbon for demonstrated excellence in all phases of basic military and academic training presented at Lackland Air Force Base, has the year, the little ribbon itself, and everything else. So I started thinking a little bit about this, and I have to tell you, the most indelible memory etched in my mind from the military, I think is still germane today. Oh, I have it done here. Oh, thank <laughs> Thank you, Nell, very much. Yeah, Wayne. I, well, yeah, I'm not going to try to edit during the show. I'm not as good as Wayne is, but maybe we'll throw it up tomorrow night. In any event, I remember when I first got to Lackland. I, I, I haven't been there 30 seconds. And the gates open up, right? You get off the airplane. You got your little package of all the material and everything else. The recruiter says, oh, you're going to love it. It's great weather this time of year. Right? So you get on the plane, and then you... You soon realize once you land in Texas, you're like, yeah, I don't think this was the cruise that I had been offered by the recruiter, right? So you get there. And the moment we pull through the gates, good evening, Jen. Thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being. Nice to see your smile. Moment you pull through the gates, you're in these buses, and there are drill instructors running alongside of the bus, screaming, frothing at the mouth, punching at the windows. They're doing everything they can. You're like, holy cow, these guys are really ticked off about something. And right, you can, the bus driver's just looking in the rear view mirror uh, to make sure nobody's taking the, you know, trying to get out the back entrance or going, well, wait a minute, I'll get on the wrong bus. I'm not even supposed to be here. Good evening, Jack. Thank you for joining us. So they're running, they're punching, they're screaming, they're hollering, they're making eye contact, they're poking people through the window. They're doing everything else. Then the bus comes to a halt. The doors open. And this drill instructor in a hat gets on, and he's just screaming and hollering and carrying on. And then everyone, get off, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's, you talk about hazing. And, and maybe it was a lot worse then than it was, uh, than it is now. But they're just screaming for you to get off the bus. Get off the bus. Get off the bus. Grab your gear. Get out here. Tow this line. And, and for some people, it may have been the first time they've ever had to tow a line. But they're screaming. They're dumping people's crap out. Too bad. It's in your email. See, now Wayne's just challenging me. All right, so just stick with me while I go down memory lane because Wayne I can't think I can, uh, can pull us off. Oh, don't you even dare install an update. Don't you even? Yeah, we learned about this last night. So in any event, here's what we were thinking. See if I can find this from Wayne. He's like, oh, that's too bad. So they're running around, they're screaming, they're hollering, they're carrying on, and they're like, get over here, you know, do this and do that. And the only reason I share that with you is I think my sense is that it's, it's true to this day. When I said last night that life is relentless, right? It just never stops. And it was a lot like in that moment, I thought, how am I going to get through this? I mean, the most that I've had people screaming at me in, in that time frame has been, you know, since I pledged a fraternity, uh, you know, I, I, I pledged a fraternity in college. And I'm like, all right, so how am I going to get through this? So we no sooner get off the bus and there's another bus that pulls up, right? And on that bus, 
a lot of the same people, people coming over and they jump off, everyone else screaming, hollering, carrying on. And in that moment, I don't want to call it Zen. I don't know what it was. But in that moment, I realized that I wasn't going to take it personally. And why? Because everyone and their brother, and I'm sure there were some girls in there as well, everyone and their brother and their sister was getting screamed at in the same way. Right. And then what it what dawned on me in that particular moment in all of time was that it didn't matter that I was there. All the negative things they were saying about your mom, about your hometown, about the way your hair looked, you know, all these other things. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe, but at that time I had hair, all those other things. And it dawned on me in that moment right then that it didn't matter if I was there or not. It didn't matter who was there. So I wasn't going to take it personally, right? I wasn't going to take it so that when it happened, I would have to say, oh, they really don't like me, or oh, life is gunning uh, against me, or any of these other things, right? I'd have to go, no. Even if I weren't here, the same thing would be happening. They'd be screaming and hollering and, 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 you know, carrying on and everything else. So just so Wayne, just so everyone knows, Wayne challenged me here and I did be rude and look away, but this is the, the picture that I sent to Wayne earlier. Wayne, thank you very much. John, thank you. Marcia, nice to see you. Thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. So here's this little thing, right? So you go through all that. And, and as you know, if you've been, uh, been watching the show at all, I was, uh, you know, I graduated a couple different times uh, from a couple of different military academies before I went on, uh, you know, before I went on to civilian law enforcement. But the lesson that I learned that particular moment when everyone was busy screaming at me, right, where it just looked like, what the hell did I get into? What was I thinking? Right. I'm thinking New York is not all that bad. In that moment, I realized it wasn't about me. It wasn't about any of the 30 or 40 or 50 individuals on this bus or any other bus pulling in that day. Thank you, Wayne, very much. I am learning. Glasshopper, you move too slow. Right? I am Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. You're a great teacher. Kathy, nice to see you. Thank you so very much for joining us this evening. About your mom. Yeah, I know, right? Marcia, they, they, they'd scream the most, just the most vile things because they wanted you to overreact. Then, you know, you get your head shaved and everything gets dumped into a green duffel bag and, you know, all these other things. And, you know, there's a bunch of people that aren't, weren't happy, right? And those recruits, they get out of the way right away. People just screaming and crying and everything else. And they're like, okay, you're not going to make it here, so why don't we just cut it? And then they put them on another bus to take them out of there. But for the people that were going to stay, the lesson that I learned that day, and the only thing that helped me go on to be to graduate number one in that class and to graduate number one in the military uh, uh, police academy class as well, The only thing that helped me through all of that was that I didn't take it personally. It wasn't about me. Anyone else could have been in that position, and those drill instructors would have been screaming and hollering and spitting and talking about their mom and talking about their hometown and their look and this and that and everything else. So in that moment, I I realized, yes, life can be relentless. Yes, we can be targeted. Yes, but we don't need to take it personally. So when I realized that no matter what I said, no matter what I did, no matter what anyone there that day did or said, they were going to get abused. (laughs) It just didn't matter, right? You were in for a whooping. There's just no other way around it. Let me say hello to Vicky. Vicky, thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. That's right. But that lesson served me extremely well when it, when it, when it, when it came time to win all the awards and to study and to perfect everything, and like was, I was like what was called a flight leader, so I, I had to button up everyone else's stuff, including to getting my own stuff buttoned up. Same when I went on to the military, uh, the weapons specialist academies. But it all started that day, that instant, in the moment where I realized whatever idiot climbs off these buses – These drill instructors, their job is to make their life miserable. So I didn't take it personally. As Rita says, taking it personally just messes with your mind. So when someone asked me the other day, well, how are you doing dealing with this tumor? I just don't take it personally, right? Life's gunning for all of us. But in that same moment, the chop block that comes, I was talking to Mar- my good friend Marcellus about this. When the chop block comes, you stand, you square your shoulders and you go, doesn't matter. 
I'm not going to be victimized. I'm not going to be triggered. I'm not going to be pushed around. I'm not going to be played like a sock puppet. As Candace says, made you tough. Thank you uh, for your service. You're more than welcome, Candace. And for anyone listening that has served in the military, thank you as well. But it all goes back to that day, that bus ride, pulling into Lackland. And I think I got off the bus and someone smacked my big yellow envelope out of the way. You know, they were just, they were just crazed. But in that moment, we can't take life personally. It's going to come after all of us. When I got the tumor, you just can't take it personally. It's going to come after all of us. And I'm sure, look, there's a lot of people that have had it a lot worse off than I have. And I, get, I have to be honest with you. I get some looks from time to time when people go, let me get this straight. You're telling us that the tumor is the best thing that ever happened to you. Absolutely. Everything that's ever happened to me is the best thing that could happen to me. Because I believe what I said. First stop, Hell's Kitchen. Absolutely, Wayne. <laughs> Absolutely. But I believe what I said earlier. Every instant is a divine intervention. Right? Yes, fate tries. But then for you and I to counter whatever fate's trying to do, there's another divine intervention. There's the ability to look at life as this Rubik's Cube that I talk about and go, all right, what's your move going to be next? And then it's going to do this, and you're going to go, okay, great. And then what's your next move going to be? And then you go, oh, well, I'm going to line these up, and then I'm just going to keep working on making sure that I stand up to fate. I'm not going to tuck my tail and run. I'm going to square my shoulders. And at every attempt at a chop block, I'm going to magnify the moment. I'm going to look around me and go, what can I use? What is the divine intervention that I'm missing right now? Because for every punch, there's a counter punch. What is it? For every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. I begin to believe that that's absolutely true. Jamie says, you created the perfect armor. And I think that perfect armor, Jamie, thank you very much, is an understanding that for all the crap that falls into our life, some really good stuff falls in at the same time if we're just patient enough, if we're just stubborn enough, if we're just, 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 <laughs> if we're just like, you're not going to victimize me. I'm going to do whatever it takes to survive. And if you knock me down, I'm going to get up again. And you knock me down again, I'm going to get back up again. And it's been a standing joke of late, Dwayne and some of my friends. I don't, I don't know if Lee will attest to this or not. But people have said, I know you think, oh, well, all natural being. I make the joke about uh, someone said, oh, you need to be a little more uh, Eckhart Tolle than Genghis Khan. I like Genghis Khan, right? You need to be a little more Kumbaya than Kick-Ass. Oh, I have to tell you, I like Kick-Ass. And a part of me, what I'm realizing is that the times in my life that were the toughest on me, is that because I was too soft, right? And Wayne jokes with me, he was joking this morning, well, how's it coming working on your soft skills? <laughs> right? I have to tell you, the times in my life that have been the roughest, I was focusing on soft skills, not directed towards other people, but directed to myself. Oh, well, I'm not feeling good. Tough crap. Get up and do it anyways. This whole thing about, well, you know, you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I think the times in my life that I've had it the toughest, I should have stood, looked in the mirror, and hurt my feelings. I should have looked right in the mirror and said, stop being a whiner. Stop being a victim. Stop focusing on all the negative in your life. Good God, you're tough to hang out with. Right? So these soft skills that everyone wants to perfect, oh, don't use any triggering words. Don't say anything that's insensitive. Don't say that's anything that's inappropriate. I don't believe in inappropriate speech. I believe in inappropriate hearing. What did I see today in the news somewhere that some congressman, you all elected him, not me. I got to tell you that right now. And if you live in California, you elected him. Some congressman goes, oh, you know, other than this, this pesky little First Amendment thing, I'd love to be able to dictate everyone's speech. What? What? No, no. Just check it out. If, if a congressman says, I'd love to be able to check everyone's speech, to make them to watch it. Right? Oh, but yeah, you know, there's this pesky little First Amendment thing. Thank goodness. Rita says, mortal up. I absolutely believe that. Lee says, a candle or a blowtorch, up to you. I love it. Don't forget your goggles. Blowtorches are good, right? Right? I absolutely love blowtorches. You know, that would be a great gig, wouldn't it? If I if I said that and I turn right. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Not a blowtorch. I have my thing for that I use for uh, probably get banned from Facebook now because it says that I'm culturally appropriating arsonists or something. I don't know. Uh, but I have my little thing. 
Someone asked me the other day, do you really like those incense? And I go, it's not so much that I like the incense. I just love Mexican food. Take that for what it's worth. So in any event, uh, here's my blowtorch for dealing with uh, Mexican food whenever we have that for dinner. So here's the thought that I would like to leave everyone with or as we get ready to leave is that are there times where you're just too soft on yourself? Could we stand from being a little harder? Are there times, right, where we're going, yeah, you know what? Get up. Stop your whining. Throw yourself back into the fray. Throw yourself into the labyrinth of life. Don't. <laughs> yes, Candace, I could imagine, which is why I lit it up over here, right? Just saying. But I do love Mexican food. Right? Could it be that when we're, our skin is the thinnest, right? Like I say all the time. Oh, but people ask, oh, how thick should your skin be? Like an alligator's skin, right? I think it should be as thick as an alligator. That's the thickness of skin that we're talking about. Henry says, no matter what comes into our lives, it always falls back on how you perceive it. Amen. And how you react to it. The positive or the negative comes from us, Henry. Oh, this is a great segue. Don't forget, bottom of the hour, thinking re-envisioned. Wayne, if you would, uh, put the link right up here in the bottom of the feed, if you will. So everyone knows how to get to the show. Oh, and tomorrow night, don't forget, uh, we're going to be doing, you know, here on Transitional Radio, we'll do 8 to 8.30. We'll be all natural being. 8.30 to 9, the incomparable uh, Henry Noel will be thinking re-envisioned. And then my sense is, Lee, let me know. Give me a thumbs up, Lee, if that's true. Lee's going to be here in the studio tomorrow night for the third edition, the third episode of Copy That Speaks. That'll be tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. So we've got all kinds of cool things going on here at IPMNation.com slash TR now. If you're looking for 90 minutes to be entertained, this would be the place to come, is my sense. All right, as we get ready to wrap up tonight, what did I learn from all those years in the military? If it isn't me, it would be someone else. We can't take it personally. Fate's attempt to chop block us is going to be what it's going to be. But you and I are built in such a way that we don't have to tolerate it. We don't have to stand for it. And those times where we're down, those times where we're pessimistic, those times where it just doesn't feel like we want to get out of bed, maybe we're being too soft on ourselves. Oh, it's all about, do I have a pillow? It's all about feelings, right? You want to wrap yourself in a blanket and you want, I don't know, a soft, a soft animal, a stuffy or whatever it's called, right? But what if the times that we're feeling the most hurt is because we're just being soft on ourselves. Maybe so. Don't know. All right, we're going to get ready to get out of here and throw it over to Wayne so he's ready to go at the bottom of the hour. Any thoughts, let me know here in the thread. Jamie, thank you so very much. Hey, I wanted to say I really enjoyed Lee's show. Well, thank you, Candace. Lee was, uh, he's great. He's something else. And, you know, we got Noggin Cam and everything else, but Lee is, uh, he's a talent. And let me tell you this, what you see on camera with Lee, one of the things I dig about Lee, and for that matter, one of the things I dig about Henry, is that if you were to say anything about the three of us, I think it would be safe to say that they're exactly the same way in person. When I look at Lee sitting here in the studio and he pulls any of his crap, it's just like having breakfast with him, right? I can't look at him with a, like a drink of anything in my mouth, right? Because you, 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 can t- you can't tell what he's going to do next. And that's what I love about Copy That Speaks. Lee says, thank you so much, and it's only going to get better. Well, yeah, probably, because I'm going to have to take a week or two off to recover from surgery, so it'll be all Lee. So, of course, I call it therapy. Right. If ever I have one of those days where I go, oh, yeah, I need a laugh, I call it therapy. So, yeah, it's going to get a lot better because <laughs> I won't be co-hosting it here, maybe. Who knows how Friday's going to work out, right? Tomato, tomato. All right, we're going to go ahead and get ready to get out of here. Dallas, thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. Lee, I know, right? So we are on for tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, Lee. Yes, I think so. Pretty sure. So that will be right after thinking re-envisioned. All right, we're going to go ahead. Wayne's going to be like, oh, you actually gave 10 seconds back. Yes, remember this, just like me, is a middle age, middle teenager age guy pulling in the Lackland Air Force Base, everyone screaming and hollering and spitting. We can't take life personal. It's going to be relentless. But so are the divine interventions that if we're just awake enough in this particular moment at all of time, thank you, Marcia, very much. 
There's no way fate can beat us. All right, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Wayne, I am tossing it over to you. Thank you so very much for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow night. And as I said, if you're planning a New Year's resolution of, of just bolstering your immune system and getting it back in the best shape mentally and physically of your life, tomorrow night show is a show for you. All right, we're out of here. See you tomorrow night. IPMNation.com.